Uh, Nick, good morning. How are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, I'm doing well. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Doing well. Okay. Uh, how has Quan Alexander changed the reputation or changed the mindset of this defense in just two short weeks? What, have, what is the impact that he has made uh, on the unit? Wow, Quan's the headliner over at Taysom. All right, we'll, we'll start there. <laughs> Welcome to LSU country, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I thought he played really, really well this week, and I think you saw the difference between, um, you know, that first game he played, he only practiced for, for three days, and he came in. And I think that there were times where it looked like he was playing on instinct, but I still thought, he played really well. He uses athleticism well to get in position to make plays. But I think there were probably a couple mental errors in that game. If you watch really closely, especially in the run game, some of the fits in that were maybe just a little bit off. But I thought this week he, he looked a lot more organized, a lot more comfortable. Um, and, and I just think he was, he was playing more than processing. And when he sees that stuff and he can get to it, his, his game is really, really dynamic. And, and, you pair him with Demario Davis and those two guys in a division where there are a lot of really, really good linebackers. I think immediately you can make an argument that they're in that conversation with, with Tampa Bay and with the way they played last week, you know, that's just one game, but for one week, they were definitely the best linebacker duo in the NFC South. And man, they, they just killed San Francisco on that trade. They traded Kiko Alonso to fit for him yesterday San Francisco cut Kiko Alonso with an injury designation. So that's wow. done for them. So they got a conditional fifth round pick for this player who is going to be a difference maker on a, on a team that's going to go deep into the playoffs. So the Saints definitely won that trade. I think that uh, Quan's looking like the ideal and suddenly linebacker is a strength for the defense. If he keeps that up, I don't even think that that's a question. I mean, they took a position that was mediocre and, and really upgraded it for an injured player in a fifth round pick. Nick Underhill joining us here just like he does every Tuesday on Twitter at Nick underscore Underhill, and you can find his work at NewOrleans.Football. All right, the Taysom storyline. Uh, last week when you found out he was starting uh, and that Jameis was out of the offensive game plan, and then what did you make of his play on Sunday going into, uh, going into the Denver game? You know, I thought he was solid. There's definitely things that he can do better. He didn't start that game very well. Um, I think it took him a little bit to, to settle in. And I think that's understandable. I think we could probably make the argument that, you know, for a guy coming in and, and starting, I, I think maybe, and I don't want to be, you know, overdo it or anything or, or be too blinded through the scope in which we're looking at this, but it, it felt like there was probably more pressure on him than anybody that started a game in, in quite a while. Just given the attention on, on him um, the performance, the groundswell for Jameis Winston to play instead of him. And just really, I, I think that a lot of people wanted him to go out there and crash and burn to confirm their biases instead of giving him a chance. So, and I think he probably felt that going onto the field. And it, it took a little bit for him to settle in. But once he settled in, I, I think you saw, I'm not going to say that they, they're validated for what they think about this guy or anything like that. It's far too soon for that. It's one game, no film. You got to keep doing it, you know, but for, for a week, at least the hypothesis of Taysom being a viable NFL starter, I, I think was verified. He, he played well, um, you know, the deep pass to Emmanuel Sanders, if you look at it, <laughs> his leg got hit when, when he was throwing it. So, you know, that helium bloom crashing out of the sky, I, I think was maybe because his, his mechanics, it, if you'll see his body jerk right at the release point because his, he's trying to avoid getting his leg hit. That was a horrible throw. Um, you know the 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 bootleg was a was a really bad throw. You know there's there's a few of them. Um, the fumbles I think are a hugely significant issue, and, and that should probably be the thing we're we're talking about ahead of even the throwing. If he's fumbling the ball twice a game, you know every time he's handling it thirty times, I don't know you know how long that can that can last and how long you can keep going to it. But you know the the quarterback stuff was a huge shock for him to be able to to drop back in the pocket, it, go through his reads, and there's there's a lot of I think you know. 75% of his passes in my book were, were first three throws, but there were a few where he was getting to two and three and for him to be able to sit back in the, the pocket and be a pocket passer and also possess the ability to run like Mike Allstott is, is a crazy combination. And it's much different than what was expected. I think we all probably expected some Lamar Jackson stuff, you know, scheming yeah. open reads with his leg. And it, and it wasn't that. And I think if you're, if you're a pocket passer who can run like a fullback, you're much more dangerous than, than a guy that has to run to be able to throw. So, so I mean, you know, the, the, the possibilities are, are very intriguing. You know, I, I think there's a lot that he still has to prove. But for a week, you know, I, I would say 
you know, I'd give it a seven out of ten. I, I, I thought he was he was very solid and did a lot of things really well. Uh, yeah, that deep ball, it's like it's like a horrible movie that is so bad that it ends up being good. Uh, <laughs> you got a lot of enjoyment out of it. Like the defense, you cannot account for the 15-yard underthrow. So, so Taysom, Nick, Taysom is the headline, uh, but the defense is the story, right? And you saw Taysom's growth throughout the game, and I don't know that that growth is even allowed to happen or happen this smoothly without the defense just making him feel supremely confident that, okay, you got time to kind of get this thing going. Um, what were your takeaways defensively for New Orleans on Sunday? Yeah, and I mean, I think you make a really good point, too, just even the defense helping Taysom. I mean, he play actions on 41% of his plays, and you can't do that if you're not ahead in the game. That just doesn't work. It's, it's gone. So you aren't getting these deep drops and, and giving yourself a little bit more time for things to develop and, and you know, just having that layer of protection. So, yeah, I mean, playing with the lead is, is the other thing. Can, can Taysom keep them in a game when it's close from their behind? I mean, there's a ton of questions before we get way ahead of it. But, yeah, the defense overall, I mean, it, that, that was an incredible performance. And I think, you know, three weeks in a row now, they're kind of validating it. I, I don't think it's a coincidence. And, you know, there's just a lot of little details. I think it was like their fourth or fifth sack of the game on the right side of the formation. You know, they're kind of in a, in a tight split over there, and in, in, in the two guys are, are lined up real close. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Janoris Jenkins just got a switch. And it's such a simple thing. But I, it, earlier in the season, when there's these situations where they got a switch, there's any communication, the two players end up picking each other and, and it turn into a deep pass down the field. And they're sorting through stuff like that. And it's just all those little moments and these details that they weren't getting right early in the season, they are getting right now. And it's, it's paying off. And I think all along they've had the talent. You know, I, I made some really bold and broad statements during the offseason that made me look like probably the dumbest person around for a while. Um, <laughs> hey, you look good now, though, Nick. I mean, it's paying off, dude. They're eighth in scoring defense now. Like, they're climbing the ranks. Since week six, they are without a doubt the best defense in the entirety of the NFL. And I'm glad that you mentioned the coverage because we start with the pass brush, but when you look at how Matt Ryan was having to hold on to the ball, like the coverage created a lot of these opportunities. Uh, that said, though, the pass rush is just fantastic right now. It seems like the emergence of Anya Mata and the return of Davenport has just made it to where the hole is great in the sum of its parts. Like this group is just overwhelming. What about the role that Demario Davis plays in this pass rush, Nick? Because I, I feel like I don't always mention or think about him but he's constantly back there making plays and he's allowed a lot of these five man rush concepts to just be like unstoppable. I love watching him blitz just the way he sees the field. Just, there's just so much thought and intellect behind the way he approaches it. And it's not just the guy running. I mean, it's the way he reads stuff and sets it up and goes after it. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really something to watch. He had one this week. He, he just kind of, you know, sorted through, kept his eyes in the right place let the play action clear itself out, and bam, he's gone. He, you know, he, he just saw it. And I don't even know if he was supposed to be blitzing on that play, but he, he just read it, and you could see him adjust and make this adjustment. And, and, man, it was just just the way he does that and the way he sees the field. You know, there's these moments when it shows up, and, and you can just tell he's playing a little bit of a different game than everybody else, and that's why, you know, he is who he is and, and why he's risen to the level that he's at. But, yeah, the pass rush, man, overall, Anyamata, you mentioned him. I mean, he's, he just continues to kill it. And I think that, you know, he's at the point now where you start looking at him in a broader scope just moving forward. He, he's, he's gotten it this year. I don't know if last year when Sheldon Rankins went out, if he took full advantage of his opportunity, but he is this year. And I think that development is going to continue. And, look, I mean, he just he just engulfs people. And he, he – falls to the ground and he falls to the ground with so much momentum that he ends up in a position to get sacked. I mean, it's just <laughs> everything about him is, is, is forward and taking people out. You know, Trey Henderson, we, we make jokes about him kind of a little bit. And, and it seems like everybody's reluctant to give him his credit. And I don't know if he's playing to a point where you look at him like, wow, he's the best defensive end in the league, but he is sitting atop the sack leaderboard. Yeah. And, you know, his bull rush is, is really good. Um, you know, his techniques, great he, he's he's stepping up in a year and getting production where the guy on the other side of the line took a little bit to get going and I, I think he deserves more credit for the role that he's played and you know we talk about Davenport every week he didn't have a huge role in this game but he he's he's been killing it too so the pass rush has been you know really good I think it goes hand in hand with the secondary like you said when they're covering well they get after it 
I, I think you could probably call at least five of those sacks in this game covered sacks, and that isn't something that was happening earlier in the season. So everything's kind of going hand in hand. It, it, it's meshing at the right point to move forward with a quarterback who, who's probably going to have some variances in his play until he settles in, until Drew Brees comes back. But, I mean, this team is in a spot where it's it's just really rolling, and, and it's crazy to, to think that, you know, even coming into this, I, I don't know if anybody made a big enough deal that the starting quarterback was out but you just kind of know that they have the team to get through it. And yeah. I, I don't know if there's a lot of teams like that. Adam Troutman had a grab yet on, uh, on Sunday for 19 yards. It looks like he's trying to find a role in this offense. Where does he fit in? He's got to block better. I think if he blocked better in the run game, he, he would have a, he would have a role. I, I, you know, he, he played out snap Jared Cook. And if he, if he had blocked just a little bit better in the run game, I think you'd be looking at it. Like, it'd be a guarantee that's going to happen more and more often. It is, his production, uh, you know, in the passing game, slowly coming along, but he runs good routes, and, and you see some trust there. I think that his versatility suits him a little bit better than some of the other tight ends with uh, with Taysom Hill back there. There were a few plays where they lined him up in the backfield, and you can put him different places. He blocked well in the screen game, in, in the passing game, but there were a couple of plays where, you know, he ended up on, on a defensive end in, in the run game and like he just got blown back. But I mean, that's going to be the, the element of his game that takes a little bit more time to come together. He's, he's coming from a low level college program. You know, he's never really blocked before. It, it was all, you know, passing game stuff for him there, but the willingness is, is there. And I think that's a huge thing. And if you have the willingness in, in his size and stature, you can figure it out. You know, like players like Jimmy Graham didn't have the willingness and it, it just never comes. So, I think that's 70% of it. Um, you know, the technique will come. He'll figure it out. At some point, he's going to be really good. I think we see the glimpses. It's just going to take him a little, uh, a little bit more time to get there. Have a good holiday, Nick. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Yep, thanks for having me. Yep. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe below. You want more great Saints content? We got it all here on Off the Bench Overtime. Check out these other videos. Share with your friends, and let's grow the Hootat Nation together. Hootat!